Hello everyone, it's AG and today I will be talking about aphorisms on love and hate. This book was written by Friedrich Nietzsche, who was a German philosopher, cultural critic, philologist, composer, poet and Latin and Greek scholar. <laughs> so many things. This book is a collection of aphorisms. These are generally understood to be concise and eloquent statements of truth. As the title states, these ones in particular are concerning love and hate, and they cover a multitude of subjects such as friendship, marriage, pity, and revenge. I found this book to be very interesting. For the past three years, I haven't really read any type of philosophical work, so it was very fun and challenging for me. I have to be honest though, it was a bit of a struggle for me because a lot of the words that were used I'd never seen in my life before but yeah that was nothing that Google couldn't solve. One thing I really enjoyed was how Nietzsche explored the underlying structures of our society and human cognition. For instance he described how the process of deeming something immoral or moral is based on the ordering of good. Nietzsche says that you have certain levels of good, for instance low good and high good. The example that he gives uses sensual pleasure as low good and health as high. He states that it is generally considered to be immoral to choose a lower good over a higher one. So thinking about Nietzsche's example, it generally is deemed immoral, I guess, to go to a strip club instead of going to the hospital when you have a medical issue that needs immediate attention. <laughs> what? I'm really bad at thinking of examples like don't don't please don't take this too seriously <laughs> Anyway, there are nuances to this people have different interpretations of the hierarchy of goodness For example, some people might set revenge higher than justice So for instance when a vigilante decides to kill a murderer Some people might say that he did the right thing and others might find it incredibly immoral what he did just to take the law into his own hands. Seeing that this was written in the 19th century, I was very surprised to see how many aphorisms were still valid to this day. For example, there is this one part in which Nietzsche describes secondhand embarrassment. Pity more intense than suffering. There are cases where pity is more intense than actual suffering. When one of our friends is guilty of something ignominious, for example, we feel it more painfully than when we ourselves do it for we believe in the purity of his character more than he does. He was even aware of throwing shade, even before it was a thing. But will there be many people honest enough to admit that it is a pleasure to inflict pain? That not infrequently one amuses himself, and well, by offending other men, at least in his thoughts, and by shooting pallets of petty malice at them? Most people are too dishonest, and a few men are too good to know anything about this source of shame. I was amazed by how much material Nietzsche was able to cover in such a small booklet. I mean, it only has about 50 pages. It even explores privilege in the way that it comes to expression when privileged people interact with those who are less privileged. It is very easy for privileged people to devalue tangible and intangible things that make up their privilege which in turn, according to Nietzsche's, makes them seem cruel. I tend to disagree because I feel that that makes them cruel, but I'm digressing. Either way, it's like if a king were to steal a loaf of bread from a peasant. The king wouldn't see this as an immense crime because the loaf of bread doesn't mean much to him. Yet for the peasant, that loaf of bread might have meant a week without hunger, and for them, that crime is immense. This difference in the assessments of the situation is what Nietzsche calls the misunderstanding between the sufferer and the perpetrator. Even though I did enjoy most of the aphorisms, I do have to say that I definitely noticed that this was written from the perspective of a white man living in a time in which male fragility was even more prevalent than it is right now and in which women didn't really have a lot of rights. It seems that women are seen more as an accessory to men rather than equals. 
definitely in this one aphorism that was advocating for men to have mistresses because their wives are already dealing with so much stuff and they would not be able to uh, please them as well so that would be like the best solution I, I, I think I just short circuited myself but despite this being very male focused I did still agree with a lot of the aphorisms concerning marriage and friendship. Friendship and marriage. The best friend will probably get the best wife because a good marriage is based on a talent for friendship. Marriage as a long conversation. When entering a marriage one should ask the question do you think you will be able to have good conversations with this woman right into old age? Everything else in marriage is transitory but most of the time in interaction is spent in conversation. Friend. Shared joy not compassion makes a friend. There were also a lot of aphorisms that were just beautifully written and that really amplified the idea they were trying to represent. And so I will end this review with my favourite one. The Hour Hand of Life Life consists of rare isolated moments of the greatest significance and of innumerable many intervals during which at best the silhouettes of those moments hover about us. Love, springtime, Every beautiful melody, mountains, the moon, the sea, all these speak completely to the heart but once, if in fact they ever do get a chance to speak completely. For many men do not have those moments at all and are themselves intervals and intermissions in the symphony of real life. So that was everything I had to say concerning aphorisms on love and hate. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.